In 2010, Wayne Rooney won Player of the Season, a season in which he admitted to being seven pounds overweight before it started. But Rooney's unconventional build never stopped him from becoming a footballing icon. You were probably one of the most recognisable names, faces in the world. He was on the covers of FIFA games, he made the FIFA World Eleven. he even had his own TV series. But that leaves the question, how did Rooney accomplish all this despite his weight limitations? And what stopped him from being better than Pele himself? Rooney's life was full of setbacks. Due to his genetics, he had a tendency to put on weight like his father. This meant he had to work harder than everyone else, and making it pro seemed highly unlikely. But for Rooney, all this adversity made him stronger. With Wayne sharing, I was brought up to fight for everything. Rooney's talent, even at the young age of eight, was undeniable, and it soon caught the attention of a Premier League club. But it wasn't just any club. I got scouted by a scout at Liverpool and I went for one trial and then Everton, a scout from Everton phoned me up to see if I go there. So He actually turned up in his Everton kit, uh, wouldn't change it and that night we signed him. I went to watch him in a game and uh, he scored a couple of goals. And You know, his technical ability was second to none. Even as a young boy he could, he could handle the ball at any time, anywhere. He had the, the scout swagger and the scout's attitude and I half thought, yeah. I quite like what I've seen. And he was physically always very good as well. So he had all the, all the makings of a, of a player. Rooney's potential for greatness became evident, hinting at an amazing career ahead of him in the Premier League. However, no one anticipated that he would make his debut as quickly as he did. Joined that club when he was nine years old. He made his debut at 16. It's a story of romance, it's a bit love. But not everything was sunshine and rainbows in this period. The change in mindset and all of a sudden having to deal with everything which comes with it. Obviously I was, I was really underprepared for that, I wasn't ready for that. We were a bit strict with him, we were tough on him. But we didn't want him to, we didn't want him to lose his focus on first and foremost becoming a, a top football player. He was treating me a little bit different to the other players. In what way? You know, he had me running around the local park by myself with the physio in. Right. Coach Moyes was tough on Rooney, but this treatment of him quickly paid off. That's his chances. Oh, brilliant goal! A brilliant goal! Remember the name, Wayne Rooney. It's a special goal and a special talent. It's uh, an English talent, uh, the biggest English talent I've seen here since I'm in England. And uh, by far, he has everything what you dream to have. It's almost like people forget how good Rooney was when he was a kid. You looked at him, you knew he wanted to succeed. He wanted to destroy everything that was in front of him. But at 16, he was the best player in our team. At 17, he was the best player in England. Rooney's genetics early on led him to growing much earlier than his peers, capturing the attention of many. He was quite a heavy set guy, which, which meant that he could excel at the age of 16. And when I saw him, I was like, Whoa, how old is he? No, 16? When he was 17, he was a man. He was playing like he was a 24-year-old, mentally and physically. Not only was he ready physically, but mentally, he was ready to conquer the world. I knew the minute I got in Everton's first team, I knew I was the best player. 17-year-old Wayne Rooney becoming the youngest scorer in England soccer history, but... And what better way to show it than on the international stage? That 2004 Euros, what he did to France, <laughs> I've not seen a performance like that. You're playing against top, top opposition and what he'd done to them was, was, I've not seen anything like it at that age. And he was ripping them to shreds. They couldn't handle him. They could not handle him and he was 18 years of age. Yeah, an 18 year old playing with no fear. And just wanted to really go and play him and show what I could do at that level, really. I mean, you tore France to shreds. In Euro 2004, you could easily say Rudy really was probably the best player in the world. But do you think, yeah, I'm the best here? Yeah, I believe that was the best player in the world. Wayne Rooney had announced his presence, and it was here where comparisons to Pele himself were first drawn. Following this performance, Rooney attracted attention from numerous top clubs. But it would take an extraordinary offer to lure him away from his boyhood club. In August, however, that offer arrived. Manchester United's brand new number eight, Wayne Rooney. August 31st, 2004, Rooney became the most expensive teenager in history as he signed for Manchester United. I used to think there was a massive expectation from the other players thinking he better be good. But his official debut wouldn't come in the Premier League. Instead, Rooney first took to the pitch in the Champions League. 
But, as we already know, the teenager proved he could handle the pressure of any stage. He marked his debut in spectacular fashion, scoring a hat-trick and quickly earning the respect of his teammates. Rooney would continue to prove himself as a rising star in world football, but something was very different about the way he played. Because he roamed the pitch with pure anger, allowing him to strike the ball ferociously and also work hard off the ball. His 11 league goals was the most for the Red Devils that season, but ultimately United fell short of winning the Premier League. But that wasn't all, because Rooney scored an incredible volley in the FA Cup, which was named BBC Goal of the Season. However, once United got to the final, they were beaten on penalties by Arsenal, causing the team to end the season trophyless. Rooney was heartbroken, but he didn't let disappointment keep him down for long. After winning the Young Player of the Year award, he was hungry to show the world he was capable of even more. But instead, Rooney's aggression revealed its downside. In a Champions League match against Villarreal, Rooney was sent off for sarcastically clapping at the referee after a foul. This incident highlighted the double-edged sword of his intensity on the pitch. Whether England's most talented player really has the temperament to succeed at the highest level. But Rooney would bounce back immediately, scoring two goals in the League Cup final to win his first trophy. Going from 11 goals in the league to 16 was also a clear sign that he was slowly reaching his potential. Except, once again, United failed to capture the league title, with Chelsea going back-to-back. -back. And things only went from bad to worse as Rooney was injured towards the end of the season, crushing his hopes of making the World Cup. But in a big surprise, Rooney still made his way on the plane to Germany. And look who's there. Oh, he's, he's there. He's there. And after all the debate, he's here, eh? This was his chance to continue where he left off from Euro 2004. But ultimately, Rooney was never fit enough to play at his best. Looking back, I should never have went to that World Cup. He obviously brought me foot not long before it. And things went from bad to worse in the quarter-finals. Cavallio's just done a little bit of play acting oh, there, I think. There's the stamp. There's nowhere else that Wayne's boot can possibly go. Rooney was red-carded in the quarter-final for stamping on defender Carvalho. But the controversy didn't end there. As they look at this. Look at that. Has he just winked there? Club teammate Cristiano Ronaldo appeared to have played a part in his dismissal after being seen winking at his dugout. I know the, the, the Wayne is my friend and I say, I say sorry. I still, even being honest, still today, I don't know if I've meant it or not. I think it's just something which happened, my mind went blank. Things were not looking good for Man United in 2006. Their last title victory was three years ago and was already a distant memory for their fans. Coupled with the apparent tension between Rooney and Ronaldo, it becomes clear that United just can't keep up with Mourinho's Chelsea. But it was here where Rooney shocked everyone. People say things who don't, who don't know the pair of us and you know, um, I think how dare we let our football do the talking today and thought Cristiano was brilliant and scored a great goal. Because Rooney and Ronaldo scored a combined 46 goals that season, earning the pair their first Premier League medals. Yeah, they're both top players and to have them both in your team to be able to play with them, it's, it's great. They walked in the dressing room, no fear in these kids. They've got courage, courage to want the ball, courage to be the most expensive player in the world. Unbelievable feeling for knowing myself and my family as well. And things also got better for Rooney in the Champions League. His two goals against AC Milan in the semi-final cemented Rooney as one of the biggest stars in world football. But Rooney and Ronaldo raised the bar even higher in the following season. They led Manchester United to back-to-back -back league titles and brought the Champions League trophy home to Manchester. Rooney finally achieved the success he had dreamed of as a kid. But sadly, the joy wouldn't last forever. In United's opening league game against Reading, Rooney broke his foot for the third time in three years. Once the injury set in, he did take something away from him. And that, and that kind of probably stopped him from being the player that people thought he would be when he was 18. He lost his athleticism quite early on in his career, so he had to change his game somewhat. During this time, Ronaldo seized the opportunity to become the biggest star in the world. But, as we've seen time and time again with Rooney, setbacks only fueled his relentless drive to succeed. His 12 goals in 20 starts were instrumental in United achieving a historic three-peat in the league. What's even more remarkable is that Rooney continued to score consistently despite battling through multiple injuries. Rooney and Ronaldo helped bring United back to their winning ways and the future seemed bright. But in the following season, Rooney would have to shoulder the responsibility alone, as CR7 decided it was time to part ways. Got to take the money, haven't they? I think they really can't, really can't, 
you know, they've got to take it. Got to take eighty million for that. You know, let him go. He wants to go there. That's where he wants to go. It's obvious that Man United will struggle, and Rooney doesn't have the guts to score goals. Rooney was never viewed as the primary goal scorer of the team, often playing second fiddle to Ronaldo. However, with CR7's departure, things were now different, and this was his opportunity to prove himself as the main man. The season didn't start smoothly for Rooney though, who admitted he began seven pounds overweight due to his genetic predisposition to gaining weight easily. Waza, they come back from holiday and you go, oh, you've had a holiday. <laughs> what, Wayne Rooney? Yeah, 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 yeah just un unfit, unfit. But Rooney made no excuses. He put in extra work to overcome his challenges, and once the season began, he didn't disappoint. Rooney thrived in his new role, scoring 34 goals across the season. But there was a point in the season, like March, February, where he had more goals than Messi. When he's in that form, it's, it's hard to handle. He's probably, uh, he's probably coming into his prime. Probably him and Messi, the best two players in the world, in my opinion, at the moment, in their current form. No revelation, everyone knows what he's doing uh, in England at the moment for Manchester United. But something was very different about the way he played. In the League Cup final, he showcased his prowess as a traditional number nine with his header against Aston Villa. But Rooney was also capable of playing in a false nine role, linking up play with his teammates. Come on, Wayne, come up and get it, mate. Winning Player of the Year was a clear sign that Rooney was the best striker in the league and one of the best in the world. Thiago Silva and Nesta slapped them about, bullied them in the San Siro, I think it was. Wayne Rooney has the potential to become one of the great players uh, the world has ever seen. You no, know, he's only 24. He's got another 10 years, 10, 12 years, however, however long he wants to play for. You know, he's, he's proven what a world-class player he's, he's been, but ultimately they just fell short. But what made these achievements even more special was that he did this without United replacing star players like Ronaldo. The second highest goal scorer that season managed just 12 goals, highlighting United's struggle to fill the void left by their former stars. Rooney was frustrated, and it was at this point where he shocked everyone. Meanwhile, England's biggest star, Wayne Rooney, has confirmed his intent of leaving Manchester United. His reasoning appears to be the ambition of the club and the kind of players that are promised in terms of bringing them in. He was happy at the club, it was at the best club in the world. I must say it was terribly disappointing to get that news because we just couldn't quite understand it. He's probably felt a bit disrespected from that point of view, but I was doing it from a personal point of view. If you want me to commit myself for five years, I need to know what the plan is, um, what players we're bringing in, and you know, we'd sold Tevez, sold Ronaldo. So I wanted reassurances of who, what, who we're bringing in. If you want me to commit myself the next five years, the majority of Manchester United fans actually agree with. They were asking the same questions which I was asking a few years before because I could see the club, where the club was going to. Things also went from bad to worse with the arrival of the World Cup. If he stays fit, England can do very, very well. Maybe he's a better goal scorer than Messi. Wayne Rooney could be just as effective as Messi for England in the World Cup. I believe that. I think Wayne Rooney is a little genius. After demonstrating his worth as the best number nine on the planet, England manager Fabio Capello didn't care. Instead, he was made to play a second striker role off Emil Heskey or Jermaine Defoe. Once again, England disappointed at the World Cup, with Rooney struggling to make any impact. Terrible game, nil nil against Algeria, it a team that definitely should have won. Like, Rooney was rubbish for the first time I've said that in a long time. Wayne Rooney didn't turn up. Even Wayne Rooney uh, looked ordinary tonight. Yeah. He's always better than that. He would play on the street better than that. He would play Sunday morning with his mates better than that. With such high expectations on his shoulders, the backlash for Rooney was severe. There was plenty of players that didn't have a great World Cup this year, but who got the most stick? It was Wayne Rooney because... England need me to perform well for us to win the tournament. So that was a lot of pressure for me to deal with. Bad performance, that's probably from, from me just holding everything in and trying to do too much at times as well. Rooney was um, struggling to cope with the amount of media attention. You know, following your everywhere you went and every move you made. To try and deal with that um, was very tough um, and I weren't ready. And it was all this unwanted attention which led him down some dark paths. I could feel it coming but you wouldn't say anything, you, you just let it build up and then um, there'd be an explosion. I'd go home and I'd drink for two days straight. Um, just on your own? Yeah, on, on my own and um, I'd wake up and rough and 
You put nail drops in, chewing gum, mouthwash. His That's cope, not a healthy no, way. No, his coping mechanism with the pressure. Mm. Mental health, which has obviously become a massive issue. It's always been a massive issue, but most people have hidden it. I was suffering inside, and it was almost impossible for me to go into that dressing room and, and open up to the players in the dressing room or the manager because I thought it was almost seen as a weakness. Mm. Rooney's story perfectly highlighted the suffering that the British media can inflict and the importance of mental health. But in the following season, Rooney bounced back in style. Rooney! His overhead kick against Man City earned him his third BBC goal of the season. And he wasn't done there, because Rooney spearheaded a remarkable second-half comeback against West Ham with a hat-trick. These performances contributed to another league title for United, and Rooney's achievements were duly recognised. He was named in the FIFA World XI alongside his former teammate, Ronaldo. But it was still clear that the rest of the team just weren't on the level that Rooney would have hoped for. Because Rooney's 27 league goals in the following season were not enough to give United the league title. It was crystal clear that the team needed reinforcements. Enter Robin van Persie, fresh from winning the golden boot for Arsenal. Rooney and Van Persie quickly formed a perfect partnership, which was epitomised by Van Persie's iconic goal against Aston Villa, set up beautifully by Rooney. In the end, Rooney added another Premier League medal to his collection, further cementing his legacy. For us to win that, that league title was, was a miracle, really, I think. Rooney would finish his career as a top scorer for Manchester United and also England. Five Premier Leagues, five League Cups, an FA Cup and a Champions League. The kid from Everton had transformed into a Premier League legend. He had weight problems, he was constantly harassed by the media and he had more injuries than most. But Rooney never complained. He always laid his heart out on the pitch, giving everything for his team. He's a human being who's been brought up on a council estate. There's a normality there. And, and Rooney can't help that. It's in, it's in his genetic. You're always going to be massively up against it. People don't give this guy the respect he deserves. This guy was unplayable. Like. He never stopped. Always run, help the team. He's, he's a fantastic team player. And uh, he scored goals. For me, he, he, he was born to play football. <laughs>